Without getting too technical, I'll show you the severe limitations of modern consumer theory while we explore four things that consumers value, which is quantity, quality, variety, and convenience. By the end, any economic student will know the problem with this theory in a way like never before. I'll also give a glimpse of a simple solution, for sure. Indifference curve graphs, a geometric representation of a consumer's rational preference relation, characterized by completeness and transitivity. Indifference curves are convex, downward sloping, everywhere in the plane, and they never cross. Is that really true? Let's see if we can generate indifference curves that don't have these properties. If so, rational behavior can have absurd implications in the standard model. The Super Bowl tops ratings every year, so we'll apply the theory to this common leisure activity. It's Bills Cowboys 3 before economic suicide in Buffalo, and football fans must choose between one of two viewing options. Option A is to watch the game alone, in a room with exactly one television of the highest available quality, in the subjective opinion of the viewer, good X. Option B is to watch the game alone in another room on a specific lower quality television, good Y. But the viewer can choose an unlimited quantity of the relatively inferior television. In a college class, these indifference curves are very flat or perhaps linear because the televisions are close substitutes. This graph has nothing to say about quality. Factually, demand is sensitive to changes in the price of close substitutes. These preferences are rigged to get a high cross price elasticity of demand, and they possess the four properties of indifference curves. How should my curves behave? Good X is the television that I want, a TriMaster. Good Y is the relatively low quality television that I have, a 46 inch XBR10. Let's look at the local behavior of my indifference curve that has the point 1, 1. If I had a TriMaster, then any viewing of my XBR would be irrational, so it becomes worthless. The indifference curves must be parallel with the y-axis in the interior of the plane. However, I have a corner solution since I don't own a TriMaster. My optimal indifference curve must cross the y-axis. It seems that a continuous indifference curve with these properties must be concave or upward sloping. How can any interior point be on my optimal indifference curve when one trimaster is more than an infinite number of XBRs? The preference arrows point to cracks in the foundation. Digital music technology has gone in two very different directions since 1983. The iPod makes listening to music more convenient. Another direction is to improve sound quality with new formats. This is an audio-only Blu-ray disc of Wagner's music encoded with DTS HD Master Audio. It is an exact bit-for-bit -bit copy of the master recording in 7.1 surround sound rather than compressed 2.0 stereo. Imagine that someone is considering if an iPod is a good gift for an owner of a fully capable Blu-ray home theater. For this example, we'll use my subjective opinion and say music on Blu-ray is the inconvenient high quality good, good X, and music on iTunes is the convenient low quality good, good Y. The gift giver knows the listener's piecewise continuous income expansion path of unique alternating corner solutions. The iTunes corner solutions are justified because it would be irrational to buy Blu-ray if the consumer is too busy for the inconvenient product. The Blu-ray corner solutions are justified since Blu-ray can make an iPod a waste of time. Different incomes lead to different lifestyles, so how does this technology fit in? Pieces A and C make the iPod a great gift, but pieces B and D make it a wasted gift. Let's assume this person has convex and downward sloping indifference curves to see if these preferences are rational. This broken path must be produced by crossing indifference curves that are not present in some parts of the music plane. This is a violation of completeness and transitivity. The consumer is simply irrational according to the standard model. 
but it can be rational behavior in a different theoretical framework. If I were to listen to the same Beethoven for the next 12 minutes and 8 seconds, then one Blu-ray audio system is better than an infinite number of iPods for listening. On a hectic day, one iPod can be more valuable than an infinite number of Blu-rays. This gift is lighter and smaller than an iPod, but it's less convenient than the Blu-ray disc. As the DVR also reveals, convenience is not really about mobility. This model does not tell me what convenience is or why I would trade it for quality, which is also a total mystery in this dead end. The key assumption of diminishing marginal utility didn't provide any useful insights. The possible local behavior of an indifference curve for any quality versus convenience point is problematically endless. This all-important equation will not help me understand why the higher quality Super Audio Compact Disc format was crushed by the iPod. This model only predicts quantity responses when prices or incomes change, and it vastly exaggerates the importance of variety. Don't worry, this CES utility function is quick and easy to use for the Super Bowl viewers problem. A professional might use it since the workhorse is perfectly suited to order these kinds of preferences, right? Option A gives a finite amount of utility for the consumer, for all parameters. Option B gives an infinite amount of utility by taking the limit. Therefore, option B is preferred to option A. The CES approach completely failed. In fact, everyone rationally chooses quality over quantity here. Suppose I have exactly one HDTV and two possible DVR arrangements. Option C is to have exactly one DISH 922 DVR, which has four HD tuners at 100 hours of HD recording capacity. Option D is to have any number of DISH 722K DVRs, with each one having three tuners and 55 hours of recording capacity. The 922 is more convenient than the 722K, but I prefer option D since it gives me unlimited recording and storage capabilities with identical image quality. How did quantity lead to more convenience? The CES function predicted accurately, but it wasn't illuminating. We can study quantity, quality, variety, and convenience with one equation, while we model the choice between any finite number of goods in two dimensions, with elementary calculus. Imagine measuring the rate of technological change from the consumer's perspective. One way or another, things are going to change dramatically. For how many more decades can economics professors tell their students that the real wage has not advanced for the American worker since 1973? It's tougher when they equate it to the marginal product of labor and relate it to technology on the board. The flawed consumer price index is measurement without comprehension. It's clear why economists are in such a weak position when they measure technological advancement. The CES utility function has dreamy properties, but it left us in the dark, yielding the predictive accuracy of a coin flip. Pop quiz. I don't know my lambda when I see this penny. What's yours?